Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture number 27. In this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, discrete time Fourier transform. So, in this part uh, of the course, we are talking about the Fourier. So, you understand Fourier is used to, uh, we can say Fourier is used to transform, convert the time domain signal into frequency domain signal. Uh, we can also say that Fourier is used to uh, analyze the signal what frequency components are there so uh, basically we said there are two types of uh, signals that is periodic and aperiodic signal so for periodic signal we use the Fourier uh, series so this is the sense analysis equation and you understand the analysis equation is used to convert the time domain signal into frequency domain signal or we can also say that it is used to convert the uh, basically it is used to how to say split the signal into its constituent parts right so this is the analysis equation in case of time domain uh, continuous time signal right uh, continuous time sorry continuous time signal and this is the uh, periodic signal uh, discrete time periodic signal right so the first two are this one and this one are the analysis signal which converts the time domain signal into frequency domain signal right so similarly we have this one for the case of the aperiodic signal uh, this is the analysis equation for the continuous time case and this is the analysis equation for the discrete time case when the signal are uh, a periodic right so for your you understand for your transform is used for the a periodic signal and whereas for your series is used for the periodic signals also in case of four year series you notice that whether it's a discrete time periodic signal or the uh, continuous time periodic signal the resulting spectrum is basically line spectrum that means it is the <clears throat> frequencies are not continuous whereas we have discrete frequency spectrum for the Fourier series, right? So that means the uh, Fourier coefficient existed at 0, uh, at k equals to 1, k equals to 2, plus minus, right? So similarly for the discrete time case. Whereas in the continuous time case, because we have already done the Fourier transform, so you understand that in case of the a Fourier transform the resulting spectrum is basically continuous it's not a line spectrum or discrete spectrum in contrast to the uh, spectrum of the periodic signal right so similarly for the discrete time case we'll have continuous frequencies right so the frequency spectrum of the uh, discrete time a periodic signal will also be continuous right the other thing uh, I would like to say is that we have the scaling factor right if you look at this one so we have scaling f factor here by we scale it by 1 by t and we scale it by 1 by n when we in the analysis equation uh, right whereas if you look at the Fourier transform in Fourier transform we use a constant scaling factor that is 1 by 2 pi but it is in the uh, synthesis equation right so you can easily observe it right so this is some uh, discussion about the discrete time and the uh, uh, discrete time and continuous time a periodic signal and I mean in short about the Fourier transform and the Fourier series so uh, let's have our first example which is exponentially uh, growing or decaying signal right so this was uh, a power n u of n and you understand u of n signifies that this signal will be zero when n is the argument of this uh, signal which is a step signal which is uh, n if this uh, the argument is negative then the signal will be zero because we are multiplying both signals so the product will be one only when both the signals are non-zero so you understand u of n uh, will be 1 when n is equal to or greater than 0 so that means this signal just uh, 
has non-zero value from zero up to positive infinity. So these are the equations for the discrete time Fourier uh, transformation. So uh, you understand this is the uh, analysis equation. So which which we use for finding the Fourier transform, or we can also say we are, we use this equation to transform the time domain a period time domain discrete time a periodic signal into frequency domain, and it's the uh, synthesis equation. Okay, so which is used to convert the uh, discrete uh, Fourier transform signal into the time domain. So we can uh, we can say uh, x of j omega, right? If I just straight away write, so I will just write uh, this one from. Uh, uh, okay, let me write the first step. N equals to minus infinity up to infinity uh, a power n u of n and the exponential e power minus j omega n okay so if the next step we can say because it's a u of n so that means this will be zero when n is zero uh, n is less than zero so that means the summation will be from n equals to zero up to infinity and uh, let's if I just okay a of n into e power minus j omega n. So uh, this can be written as uh, summation n running from zero up to infinity, and this is a e to the power j minus j in fact omega and this whole is n right so simply we know the summation uh, let me write here so the summation formula is summation uh, for example k running from zero right up to infinity and we have for example some beta power k so this is equal to one over 1 minus beta and provided that beta absolute is less than 1 right so because we are already given that that a is less than 0 and the absolute value of this one uh, this exponential is 1 so we made the this condition so by using this equation we can write that uh, Uh, this is basically equal to 1 over 1 minus a e to the power minus j omega right so this is the discrete time Fourier transform for this signal so we can expand it into 1 over 1 minus right you understand this thing e power j omega e power minus j omega basically if i write it in the uh, rectangular format that is in terms of real and imaginary so this is the cause of omega minus j sine of omega right so if i replace it here so this minus a multiplied by cause of omega will result into 1 minus a cause of omega and this minus and this minus becomes plus so plus j uh, a sine of omega right now we can write it in terms of uh, real and imaginary parts so that we can find the magnitude response you understand to find the magnitude response we uh, uh, we write uh, real square plus imaginary square so if we look at this one we can say that real square is basically uh, this is real part is 1 minus a cos omega is real part whereas uh, a sine omega is the imaginary part so if I want to find the magnitude response I can say x of j omega you understand the two bars represent the 
magnitude so that will be equal to magnitude because this is a fraction so we can say this is a magnitude of the numerator and divided by magnitude of denominator but this becomes a single how to say say a real value only so square of this will result into again the same thing square and square rooting will result uh, into no change so i straight away write one and then i say okay one minus uh, a cos right omega this whole square right and then plus uh, a sine omega whole square right and then we take the square root so this is the magnitude uh, similarly you can find the uh, phase response Uh, similarly expression for the phase response it will be uh, something okay argument of x of j omega and this is equal to because uh, numerator we don't have uh, imaginary value so it will be phase will be minus so the total phase will be equal to the phase of numerator minus phase of denominator so phase of numerator is zero so that's why we put minus here and then we say okay 10 inverse of so this is the expression for so this is the expression for the uh, phase response and here are the two plots the first one this is magnitude response and this is the phase response right and these values are for a is greater than zero so maybe you take you can take a equals to 0 0.5 or 0 0.43 or from greater than zero and less than one so i think that's all for this numerical problem so let's consider another numerical problem where we have x of n and uh, so this is uh, the input signal is the x of n which is equal to a uh, power absolute of n and a is less than one so that means it will be uh, exponentially growing or exponentially decaying okay maybe you may you tell me so it means that we'll take uh, n as positive right so we get a positive value of n when we consider the from 0 to infinity and again we take the negative value of n from uh, minus infinity i mean for the negative value so that it result into the positive value so let's write the a uh, write uh, the expression for this one so this is the expression now we know x of n equals to a power minus uh, a power n absolute so that means we can sum it from uh, n running from say minus infinity up to zero so it will be something like uh, a power minus n and uh, e power minus j omega n and uh, plus again summation and running from 0 up to infinity in that case we take uh, a power plus n right so in both cases when n is negative we take a power minus n so that means it will result into positive and when n is positive then we take a power n and again this is minus j omega n okay so that means we have to sum these two x of j omega equals to here i think it should be uh, uh, 
to minus one, right? So that's wrong because we are considering zero twice. So maybe I can come up to here from minus infinity up to minus one and then from zero up to infinity, right? So uh, here, if I change the variable, so say I say, okay, let m equals to, right? For this particular case, uh, let I say, okay, uh, if I replace a n equals to, so I replace uh, m, uh, I replace minus n by m, so that means when n equals to minus infinity, n, we, n will be equal to, because n equals to minus, uh, uh, m equals to minus n, so that means it will become minus Okay, so when n equals to minus infinity because m equals to minus n, so m will be plus infinity and when n equals to minus 1, m will be 1. So that means I can write it uh, m equals to 1 up to infinity, right? And this will be uh, a power uh, m, right, into e power j omega m and uh, plus we have summation and n equals to 0 up to infinity and mm, I can write like a e power minus j omega and whole power n right so using the summation uh, uh, formula so uh, using the formula summation we have already done this i'm repeating here k running from my zero up to infinity beta power k equals to one over beta provided beta absolute is less than one right so because uh, this term starts from one so i can also make it start from zero by subtracting one from this so that means we can have for this term summation m running from zero up to uh, because I am adding zero term that means when m equals to zero a power zero e power j so this whole sums to one so that means I am just adding one here so if I subtract one here I can make it uh, to uh, use the formula Right, so that means this is equal to uh, a power e power j omega, right? And I take m on the whole. So because I have added zero term here, so I should also subtract one because zero term basically equals to one. So I'm just adding one and minus one so that I can use the this equation. Okay, so plus. I have uh, this one it's already in summation form so if I use the summation here so it will be uh, the equation is 1 over 1 minus beta so beta here is a e power minus j omega so I have 1 over uh, uh, 1 minus a e power minus j omega okay and similarly if I sum this one so I get for this one I'll get uh, um, here beta is a e power j omega so I have 1 over 1 minus uh, a e power j omega and minus uh, not here but in fact minus 1 from this whole uh, expression so plus and I get for this one one or one minus a e power minus j omega right so if I subtract uh, one from one or one minus a uh, a uh, right so if I write just here uh, you see the LCM of these will be uh, something the same right 1 minus 1 minus a 
e power j omega right so this is one so the lcm of this and this is one minus e power j omega so for this i get one and for this i get uh, minus a uh, oh sorry one minus right so i get uh, minus one minus e power j omega right so if i open the bracket this will become minus one and this will become plus right so i'm just doing it in the same step because it's difficult to write here so what i get it is minus one and this becomes plus so this cancels with this so here i get sorry i forgot to mention a here so it's a e power j omega so that means this can be written as uh, a e power j omega over 1 minus a e power j omega and plus uh, 1 over 1 minus a e power minus j omega okay so to simplify it we have the uh, uh, we can write it as 1 minus a e power j omega multiplied by 1 minus a e power minus j omega right so if i simplify i'll just write the simplified answer and the simplified answer for this is okay i put an arrow here right so the simplification will result into 1 minus a square divided by 1 minus 2 a right and cos of omega plus a square okay so from here you understand this uh, doesn't contain any imaginary part so the phase response most likely will be, is zero and you just need to find the magnitude response so this is your homework so let's consider the uh, next example which is a, a pulse i think you have done and uh, no, for sure you have done the, the example of pulse in continuous time case and you have found the its fourier response and you understand what it will be right so for the pulse we have do you remember it's a uh, same function right so let's see what do we get for this one so uh, i hope you understand the uh, notation here right so that x of n equals to one when n is absolute value of n is less than or equal to n one and uh, absolute value of n is greater than n one right so you can also write it like you can say okay this is equal to one uh, uh, x of n equals to one when n is uh, less than n1 right and again this is equal to 1 when n is equal to uh, n is greater than minus n1 right so here it is plotted here so it's 1 for uh, this range and outside this range this is 0 so to find the Fourier uh, transform uh, we use the analysis equation and we say x of j omega this is equal to uh, summation right so because we have non-zero values only for minus n 1 up to n 1 so it is just this one and we say uh, e power G minus g omega n right 
I've straight away written it here because I understand the, uh, you know now because although it's a summation from minus infinity up to infinity but in this case the signal is non-zero only from minus n1 up to n1 so we just take this range for the rest it will be definitely zero so let's change the variable and we say m equals to another variable and this is equal to small n plus n one right so you understand this is your small n value so that means for the lower limit right lower limit or when n equals to uh, minus n1 so the lower limit of m will be m equals to minus n1 plus uh, n1 so the lower limit results into zero and similarly upper limit upper uh, limit right so upper limit is how much n1 so for that case we say okay upper limit m equals to uh, you see uh, this is the expression so here i put the upper limit upper limit is how much n1 so now i have n1 and n1 so this goes to 2 and 1 right so that means the expression uh, simplifies to x of j omega and this is equal to summation right uh, m running from 0 up to uh, 2n1 right 2n1 and this is equal to 1 so it will be e power uh, yes what will be the value of uh, this because here you also have to replace with uh, this one so it will be uh, minus j omega and then you replace it with so because we as you uh, we have uh, said that m equals to n plus one so that means n equals to what so n will be equal to small n right so small n equals to uh, m and minus n 1 right so here I replace okay here I will replace m minus n 1 so that's uh, m minus n 1 right so this will be uh, okay this is equal to x of j omega this is equal to summation m running from 0 up to 2n1 right and if i open this it will be something like e power minus j omega m and minus j omega into n1 so it will be uh, plus right because negative and negative right so uh, it will be plus uh, j omega n one and again because we are summing it over m so this term will be constant so i can take this one out because e power this plus this so i can write e power j omega m into right so uh, i can just write here right i can use here and i can say okay this is equal to this now you can see that basically uh, and summation is over m so i can take this one common right so that means i can write and this is equal to e power j omega n1 and this is summation okay what i get from here because you know the equation so uh, using the summation formula we can write that this is basically okay so this is a summation that we have summation k running from 0 up to m minus 1 uh, beta power k will be equal to 1 minus beta power m upon 1 minus beta right so here you understand the upper limit is m minus 1 so this is beta power m so if you have m then it will be beta power m plus 1 so in this case we have 2 and 1 right so it will be 2 and 1 plus 1 right so this is something uh, should I write straight away here so uh, this will result right I just write uh, with the uh, this result by the red pen right so this term will be equal to uh, 
1 minus e power right minus j omega let me just write okay so this will be equal to e power j omega so this is your beta and this is a power is how much 2n plus 1 it will be 2n1 plus 1 and divided by uh, 1 minus e power minus j omega okay so that means we have this and then we can write here straight away 1 minus e power when I open the bracket it will be uh, something like so it is uh, 1 minus uh, so uh, I just simplified it okay so you can say that uh, because e power j omega n1 is multiplied so if multiplied with 1 we get the same if multiplied with this the bases are same so power will be added so we have plus j omega n1 and minus j2 n1 omega so it will be uh, 2 minus 1 will be 1 so we are left with minus j and 1 omega and it's already there right so we get this one so let's move uh, i think let's simplify it so continue continuing from the previous slide let's write the expression and we say x of j uh, j omega equals to uh, so okay uh, i think mistakenly i just write in the previous slide e power plus j omega in fact it's e power minus j omega okay so here we take e power j omega by 2 common so when we take e power j omega by 2 common uh, here we had j omega n1 so now it will be j omega n1 plus j omega by 2 because when you once you multiply this minus j by 2 multiply uh, plus j by 2 will cancel so we get this one and then minus and here we had minus j omega so when i take minus j omega by 2 common so i am left with minus j omega by 2 okay similarly from denominator i have taken e power minus j omega by 2 common so you can easily see that uh, these two stands cancel okay i also if i take uh, j, j common right so i can write j here common so because i have also taken minus common so this will become plus and uh, uh, this will be in fact no j here again if i take j common from here so this will again remove the j and we are left here with omega right this so if you look at this one this is theta right so omega n1 plus omega by 2 and omega n1 plus omega by 2 so e power j theta minus e power minus j theta so this is somewhat equal uh, we can make it equal to uh, sign right so if i just multiply by 2j here right and divided by 2j here so this expression you understand results into sign right so this is your sign of right again this can also become uh how to say sign right if i just divided by 2j and multiply it by 2j right so uh, this this term again becomes sine okay now theta is j or uh, theta is omega by 2 so if we do this then that means the, this 2j cancels with this 2j right so this is your sine and this again sine right so that means we get from here uh, x of j omega and this is equal to this is sine so theta is omega and one plus omega by two so this is your sine of uh, omega and one 
plus omega by 2 right and divided by again this is sine so theta here is uh, omega by 2 so we have sine of omega by 2 right so I hope from here you can easily find the uh, responses so as a reference uh, the okay oh, I think you should go for the finding the uh, responses right so the next example is an impulse so we have impulse in time we have done similar examples for the uh, continuous time Fourier transform right so uh, what will be the uh, value for this one so let's find the uh, d uh, discrete Fourier transform for the x of n right so that's quite straightforward we know that uh, um, expression is x of j omega and this is equal to summation from uh, n running from minus infinity up to infinity and we have x of n so for x of 1 we have impulse of n right now that's quite straightforward you know because it's not shifted impulse so impulse has uh, one value in continuous time, a discrete time impulse have value equal to 1 only when its argument is 0 so its argument will be 0 when n equals to 0 so summing from minus infinity up to infinity there's only one point where we have a non-zero value for it so it will be equal to 1 okay so if I plot the plot for the discrete time uh, impulse is shown here so you can easily see that it's equal to 1 when its argument is 0 and it is 0 everywhere so it only exists in time domain it only exists at one point similarly if i uh, if we plot the spectrum of this so because this is one independent of frequency so that means this signal exists from uh, minus infinity right up to infinity at all frequencies it exists so uh, again you understand the difference between the uh, frequency uh, time domain and frequency domain so the fact is that t time and frequency are reciprocal of each other so if something is spread uh, if something is uh, contracted in the uh, time domain like the impulse so it will be spread in the frequency domain similarly if something is uh, uh, contracted in frequency so it will be stretched so that means if we find the uh, impulse in frequency and if we check the impulse the time domain version of the frequency and impulse so it will exist on all times so let's consider the inverse uh, uh, case so for example we are given a discrete time uh, the uh, uh, Fourier transform signal right so we have x of j omega equals to 2 cos of 2 omega and we need to find the time domain version of this one so let's consider we will apply the uh, inverse Fourier uh, transform equation which we also call it synthesis equation so according to synthesis equation we uh, let me write first and then we discuss so this is the uh, uh, synthesis equation okay so you understand the discrete time signals can have maximum frequency in the range of 2 pi so that's why we integrate it over 2 pi so let's put the value you have 1 over 2 pi right and we integrate it from minus pi up to pi right and the signal we are given is 2 cos of 2 omega right so the cause of can be a uh, cause signal can be represented using the Euler formula in uh, so we can say that uh, 
cos of 2 omega basically equals to ex we can express it in the complex exponential form as okay so uh, it can be expressed like this so uh, because we have 2 here 2 cos of this so that means we multiply 2 here and 2 cancels with 2 so we are left with 2 uh, exponentials right so if I multiply e power j uh, omega with e power j omega n so I can write that this is basically e power j uh, okay taking j common so I am left with uh, uh, also we also we can take uh, omega common so if I take j omega common then I n is here and we have just j omega so that means I can write n plus 1 right uh, similarly for the second part I can just say let me put a bracket here so for the second part I can write integration minus pi to oh, okay here df omega okay so minus pi to pi and then I have uh, e power uh, j omega n minus 1 okay and d of omega because here it is uh, no in fact 2 right because uh, 2 is here because it's cause of 2 omega so again uh, we'll have 2 here so I hope you can do it by yourself okay so do it by yourself and you can get the or you understand uh, the integration of it and or I should try it okay you try it if you couldn't then uh, we'll uh, do it in the live session okay so that's your homework I have done it up to here that's quite straightforward to uh, integrate and then put the limits and hopefully you'll uh, and for sure you'll find the value the uh, answer is uh, x of n equals to 1 for n equals 2 plus minus 2 and it is 0 otherwise so that's the answer for this question okay try it uh, I think this is the answer maybe you verify it if you get different answer or any right so we can discuss it in the live session so in this problem we are given the uh, impulse and frequency domain and we have to find the time domain signal for the impulse right so this is the uh, frequency domain uh, impulses so uh, the equation to find the uh, time domain for this one is the analysis equation which is written here okay just uh, I just use highlighter I'm not going to solve it it's already solved right so this is the uh, impulse and we have to find its time domain signal so uh, this is equal to right now to find time domain signal we need the uh, synthesis equation and for synthesis equation for discrete time Fourier transform is x of n equals to 1 by 2 pi integration minus pi to pi impulse of uh, omega e power j omega n d of omega right so that's quite straightforward if you look at this one you understand that impulse uh, exists only impulse has non-zero value only which are when its argument is zero so uh, its argument is now omega so that means it will be one only when omega equals to zero and for all the values it will be zero so at omega equals to zero if you put in omega equals to zero here you get e power zero and e power zero equals to one and omega zero is also one so you get one and this scaling factor so you have x of n and it is equal to 1 by uh, 2 pi times 1 so which is equal to 1 by 2 pi 
right so you understand again the nature of the uh, relationship between the time and frequency so if something is compressed in time it is stretched in frequency and if something is uh, compressed in frequency it is stretched in time so if we plot the signal for the this impulse which is uh, this uh, frequency domain impulse so we get this so I hope it gives you idea okay so maybe that's all for today and see you in the live session so we end the lecture and uh, we'll start the next lecture from this slide